You ready? Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to call this meeting to order for uh, March 2nd, uh, 2023, for the Yacoma County PRT Commission. Uh, this is to call this meeting to order. Uh, I'd also like to welcome all of our guests that are here in the audience uh, here for this uh, meeting today. Uh, we'll go ahead and start off with the approval of the minutes that we should have. Now. There should be two of them in your packet. Okay. Um, you'll do them separately. Uh, Okay. Yeah. You should have you should have both sets of minutes in your packet. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they can do them together. Okay. We can approve them one time. Yeah. Don't don't combine or do it separate. You can combine them. Just combine. Do one. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's just combine it. Yeah. Um, I will make a motion that we. Go ahead and approve the minutes as laid out. Okay. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, next up will be the vote on grant applications. Phil? Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I've got an updated treasury report for you. Um, just in numbers. Um, yeah. And actually, what I put in your chair is not even updated this morning because you sent me another this morning, uh, but 527 636 is where we stand. Um, that's just a little bit more than what you saw last week. Our last one we here last week. So I usually update that every month. You just happen to be in, in the between the people where I update it with the expenses and whatnot. So, any questions on the treasurer's report and how it reads? Uh, so, we'll start with our grants. Uh, we've got 12 grant applications today. We have $60,000 available. Um, we'll go through these, and if you have any questions, uh, I'll answer the questions that was asked of me last week whenever we go through each one. And then we do have two applicants here. Uh, Mr. Tim Ty with Discover Up Countries here. Mr. Luke Falau with the um, uh, Cyclone Museum of Cherokee. Museum of Cherokee and Cyclone. So yeah. um, if there's any specific questions on their applications, so I will run through each of these and just pause on each one and ask there any questions on the City of Seneca's request. Okay. Any question on Discover Upcountry? Um, there was a question asked of me last week about their other counties participating. Uh, Tim, you emailed me, but if, since you're here, would you mind sharing just a... A minute, you, you'll have to come up to the podium. Oh, you, oh, you want me to remember what I emailed you last no, week? No, <laughs> just, well, my copy oh, of broke. <laughs> this one broke. My copy put working this morning. Uh, but there was there was two counties that participated last year, and there was four participating this year. Uh, well, one, uh, Spartanburg, I'm, the application is due, I think I just sent it in, I think it's due April 1st, but I've already sent that one in, so I won't know what Spartanburg yet. Anderson County, uh, we received $5,000 this year from them. Greenville County, and that's one I remember, somewhere around 35,000? 37. 37, okay. That's somewhere around 35. So 37 from Greenville County. Um, and we received a grant in the fall from Oconee for 7,000? Okay. Um, and Pickens County, also actually their application is due at the end of April. So I won't know about that for, for this year um, uh, until probably in May sometime on that. Um, tip, uh, historically... Uh, Greenville County has been very good to us. Um, of course, they have a lot more money, to, but Oconee has been very good to us as well, so we appreciate all the support of Oconee. Um, Anderson kind of depends on how many tournaments, fishing tournaments they have going on. Sometimes they have too many tournaments. I keep telling Neil to slow down um, because they end up needing those for fishing tournaments a lot of time, and justifiably so. Uh, Pickens has sort of been in the transition the last few years. They do have a PRT department now, and I think they're getting on track to doing more things with <coughs> the Cherokee County is one of our other counties that really ends up by the time go through all the breakdown of the money. They don't have a lot of money left over, so I don't even really apply to Cherokee County. So, um, that's uh, Tim, did the uh, visitor's got in front of you? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Your packet. 
Yeah, I would like to, if I've got the podium and can say, I would you know, notice Oconee County and Lake Joe Cassie's feature prominently on our, our visitor's guide. Uh, a lot of our advertising you see, you're going to see uh, Joe Cassie. Uh, I just placed some ads yesterday at Station Cove Falls on it. You'll see a lot of Chattooga River. You'll see a lot of Highway 11. Um, so what we do is promote the great outdoors. And, and I know I'm biased because I am from Wahala. But, um, okay, you know, Oconee, as you well know, is blessed with, with you know, all the natural uh, attractions. And that's a lot of what we have done for the last 33-plus years. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Quick question, question by the way. So um, I was curious because I know that there's been um, a push by the city of Seneca to really push more of the our history and culture with African Americans and so forth. Is that going to be included in this uh, guide? Well, there, there's some things in there. I think you'll see some of the uh, uh, attractions in there are in there. The uh, is it the Bertha Strickland Museum? Bertha Strickland. I think is yeah. listed Bertha in there. Also. So yeah, we're um, you know and we <coughs> we've received a good chunk of our money comes from the state and other forms, and we are but we are a membership organization. But any nonprofits like the museum, uh, Mr. Lyle's museum, <coughs> and all those are going to be featured in our guide and on our website. And our website is, is, is everything's going more digital. Our website's getting more and more visitation as we're doing more through that and through social media too. So, yeah, we you know we'll promote a little bit of everything. Our the, the hook, if you will, that gets people here more than any other one thing though is kind of the great outdoors and all the natural things that we've got. So we want to get them here, but then they've got to stay somewhere, they've got to eat somewhere, and they usually want to do some other things. And you know, from African American to golf to the Revolutionary War history to all types of other niche markets or things that we are always looking to, to um, promote. And, and, yeah, we always want to work with uh, and partner with, with partners. Because our total budget for the year is about 600000 so we, uh, we need to try to stretch that as much as we can. We partner with, with Visit Oconee and, and Oconee PRT a lot. We do a, the waterfall brochure we do. We do in partnership with, with Oconee PRT and, and Lake Hartwell Country. So... Um, so yeah, the we'll, uh, long answer to a sh what should uh, you were hoping it was a short one, I'm sure, but um, but yes, we want to promote uh, anything we get. I told somebody this morning that our my elevator speech is we try to get people to come here, spend all our money, go home with empty pockets and a smile on their face. So that's our mission every day. So, and if anybody wants to be a part of this, do they reach out to y'all to say, hey, we would love to be featured in the the May? Like, how does that? Yeah, and well, kind of. You know, some some of that happens. We we reach out, and some people reach out to us. So it sort of works both both ways there a little bit. So um, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I really appreciate but, it. Thank you. I have a question. Um, I know in Okuni we have two um, grant cycles. And so last year in the spring we did seven thousand, in the fall we did seven thousand. Right. You mentioned thirty five or thirty seven five for Greenville. Is that? Year, What's a year? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's unfortunately they only do once. I mean, well, fortunately, or unfortunately, they do. Sure. But yeah, only, I don't get. Yeah, yeah, I don't get seventy out of them. Okay, no, no, that's, that's, <laughs> no, that's no, no it's just, yeah. They, but um, most, most of them do one cycle, actually. So y'all are. We're, we're actually going to have the game doing it twice. Yeah. Most counties do it once a year, and if you miss it, you miss it. So, yeah. We don't fortunate that we do two cycles instead of one. <clears throat> All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Okay. Eagles Nest Art Center. Any specific questions for Eagles Nest Art Center? Gateway Arts Council. <coughs> Museum of the Cherokee in South Carolina. Uh, Mr. Lyle is here in case there's any questions. Could, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Luther, would you come up to the podium, please, sir? Yeah, if you could, could you kind of like explain a little bit more about this this project and what it all entails? Because Phil has talked to us about this last week, and this is the first I've ever heard anything like this really? as far as you know, as far as tourism going okay. into this. So I'd be real intrigued just to learn more about. Yeah, this is about an archaeological dig at the site of Oconee, the little Cherokee village our county was named for, uh, and we did two digs. We did uh, one funded by uh, Arts and Historical, I forgot the year, but it's been 10 or 12 years, something like that. Mm -hmm. But we were on the outskirts, they call it the suburbs of Oconee, because we couldn't get on the private property at that time, so we had to dig as close to it as possible. But uh, we dug at the, um, at the fields where they grew their crops and had their games and things like that. And then after we did that, 
a few years later, we got permission from the landowners who own the site to do an actual dig at the site itself. So in that dig, it only lasted um, like two and a half days. We had the state archaeologists come up and uh, did the survey work and laid out plots, uh, one meter square plots for us to, to dig in. But unfortunately, it started raining uh, on Tuesday of that week. And by Wednesday, we had to pull out. So we didn't get much done, but we uncovered a lot of things within that short period of time. And it's a very rich area. Uh, you can do a walk through and find um, points just on top of the ground or grinding stones or whatever. I found a tomahawk head just on a walk through one time. Uh, also, we, we found um, military buttons. There were two expeditions against the Cherokee by the British. Uh, the Montgomery expedition went through first, and uh, they encamped at Fort French George, and it's one day march from Fort French George <coughs> to the site of Oconee. So that's after one day they camped there. And so they went in, they got their butts whooped by the Cherokee, came back out, camped there again on the way back to Fort French George, and then a year later, uh, Colonel Grant was wise enough to take South Carolina provincial troops with him instead of just British regulars. So they encamped there, same scenario, camped there on the way in, camped there on the way back. And in this case, we had um, all of our Revolutionary War heroes. If you had a list of all the uh, South Carolina participants in the Revolutionary War, they were there at that time. And I think I included a list of those in, in your information packet. But um, when we found buttons, we could identify British buttons as, rel as well as um, <coughs> provincial uh, military buttons there. So we have a bunch of those at the museum. Uh, I taught school for 32 years, and over the last few years, some of my former students have come to the museum and donated things that they have found here in Oconee County. So we have all that. But we would like to do an extensive dig at the site, and we can do it now because we own the property. It's, it's part of the state park system, but we have a contract with the park system that we can conduct a dig as long as we have someone from the state to supervise. So that's where the money comes in. We have to pay them. And uh, if we do a one-month dig, it would be $12,000. $12,000. And so um, we have. Does your, sorry to interrupt, does your contract require the state archaeologist on site or does the state park have an archaeologist that they would allow you to use to help cut down? I, I, it's either way. They, there is someone with the state park service who has contacted us um, and they, they could come and they might be cheaper, but the one from uh, South Carolina Institute of Archaeology and Anthropology charges big time. And that's who we had last time. Um, so, and they, they need, you know, place to stay, they, you know, reimbursements for all their expenses and all that. So it adds up. Um, but, your, but would your agreement allow the state park archaeologist to, to, in that role? And do you think they would charge you for that? What now say again? The state park. Does the state park system have an archaeologist on staff? They do, and they, I'm sure they will charge okay. this pretty much the same amount. I mean, because they, the they have to come, they they have to spend time here on the site. Because once we start digging, someone has to stay on the site to keep people from coming in and doing their own digs, you know, okay. illegal digs. So, so with the paying of the staff person to be present, so a Coney Station, um, do they have a park ranger? At the site? They or? do not. Um, Scott Alexander uh, was there <laughs> since the park opened, mm -hmm. uh, since it was bought and, and put in the state park system. So he, he lived on site. There was a house there that Scott lived in. So he retired um, what, in, at the end of... Um, Recently. Yeah. So, but they don't have a replacement yet. So if you go to Oconee Station Historic Site, there is no one on site there at all. They come there to open the gate in the morning, and they come back to uh, lock the gate at night, but there's not a ranger there. <clears throat> so we need someone there to... Who, who is they that's coming to open and lock it? State Park. So, 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 so there's some of always there. There's a sub-park of Oconee State Park. 
Okay. So the yeah, they're two separate trail, entities. The road between the two is yeah. the connector trail. Yes. Um, and it's undetermined at this point whether the state park system is going to fill that role that mm -hmm. Scott was in, or if they're going to use the county state park staff. Just to staff it. To staff it. Okay. But it, it, if they do that, they won't be anybody there on an overnight basis. It would be just a daily okay. opening gate and closing the gate, and it would kind of be unmanned and check as needed. Okay. And one thing that concerns us is um, we bought the, the site of the village uh, from the Todd family. Now, none of the Todd family, the current members, do not, they don't live in South Carolina. They never have. Their daddy was raised on the Todd farm, but then he went to school in um, Alabama, then started his family there. All the kids were raised in Alabama, and now the kids are uh, scattered around the country. They live in like Charlotte, Knoxville, Atlanta, and so forth. None of them have ever lived here. And so they rent the land out to a hunt club. And this is another problem because the, the people in a hunt club come into the site and they have um, uh, trails through the middle of our site and um, deer stands up in the trees and stuff. And so, I mean, there's no one at the state, I mean, at Oconee Station to keep them out. And so I'm thinking if we do a dig there, these guys are going to come in and help themselves. So there needs to be someone on the site when we do the dig. And um. Any other questions about the dig itself? Real quick. Yes. On the, the people who are doing the dig, is it people in Oconee County or is anybody from outside the county will come Yeah, we help have you? Buku volunteers lined up. Okay. And fortunately, we have a young lady who needs uh, to supervise a dig as part of her graduate uh, requirements. Um, she's uh, um, it's one college, uh, Lynchburg, uh, University of Lynchburg. Um, can, um, Virginia? Where is that? Virginia. Virginia, Virginia, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Virginia. So she has uh, met all her graduation requirements except for conducting a dig. And she has done... She's worked on digs before, like out in New Mexico and things like that. So her minor is archaeology. Uh, and she is a local girl from Seneca. And uh, she is delighted that we're going to do this. And she, you know, she'll get credit for it in her, in her coursework. And then, so we'll have her on board. But she can't stay there. <laughs> and also this includes, like, porta pots and things like that. This is way out in the woods. It's like a half a mile hike in from Oconee Station. Uh, and so we have to have tents and porta pots and things like that. So any other questions? Good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks so thank much. You. Thank you. Yeah. Right, the next one is uh Oconee <coughs> Visitor Center staffing for the West Metro location. Questions on that? The Oconee Military Museum. This is their return request to try and help finish with the window project, replacing all the windows in the museum. The Apple Festival. Farm Center, safety lighting for the Farm Center. Uh, the question on that last time was, is it ready? And yes. There was a delay in paving the, the road for, to be ready for the lighting, and that has been done. That was the other question I think that I had last time. <coughs> Wahala Performing Arts Center. Westminster Music Center for their musical main series. And the Wild Hearts Equine Therapeutic Center. Okay, lunch today. <laughs> All right, so my work here is done for a few minutes. Okay. And now it's up to you guys.
and kind of start working your way through. Um, you have up to sixty thousand uh, dollars to to talk through, and I will type in as you go and try to keep it going for you. Okay, um, we'll start from top to bottom on that list. Okay. Um, start with the Sacramento Apple Festival. Um, what are your initial thoughts? What I did is when we went through this last week, um, I, I, took, I took a look at what we were able to pro provide to each one of them previously right. and just put that in as a starting point. Okay. Um, and when we get to the last two, the uh, Westminster Music Center and the Wild Hearts Equine Therapy Center, mm -hmm. um, those hadn't ever asked for funds before, so I, I did an arbitrary 50% okay. on those. Yeah. And it gets us really, really close to that 60000 It totals the 594 mm -hmm. um, so I didn't know if you guys wanted to use that maybe as a starting point, and then we can adjust up and down, or what are your thoughts on, on that maybe? Um, I like it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so the the first one, uh, the Apple Festival, we did 4,400 previously. Um, the City of Seneca was 7,500. Discover Up Country was 7,000. Eagle's Nest was 1,000. And I did, we did provide on the Gateway Arts Council, we did provide 2,000 last time. I did have that in there, but I do realize now that they're only eligible for 1,100. Mm -hmm. um, so, so maybe we just do 1,000 on that one um, as a starting point, if you guys are okay with that. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't mean to no, give no, the only no, voice no. of opinion here. No, 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 no. no. you yeah. did the work. That's your role. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then the the dig site, uh, we did 2,500 for them the last time they requested money. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, 10,000. And then the Military Museum, again, is the same thing. We did 4,000 last time, and they're only eligible for uh, 37,900. I did have 4,000 in my numbers, so we're going to come a little shorter than what I just said as well. Um, yeah, so we can do... The full amount, if you want. Um, Farm Center, we did 4000 previously. Wahala Performing Arts Center, uh, last time we did 7000 And then the two new ones, um, just to, again, I put an arbitrary 5000 in there um, as a 50% okay. starter for those. Um, and that does get us very close to yeah. that 60000 and um, And we can make adjustments <coughs> as needed, but... What is the actual total? Uh, now it's a uh, 58190. 58190. Oh, so it's pretty close, yeah. Okay. I'll make one comment. That, yeah. Um, and I think this is a great organization, by the way. But the, the Wild Hearts Equine mm -hmm. Center mm -hmm. do a phenomenal job, but it, we have to think at it, at it as promoting our park recreation, tourism, and beds, and restaurants, and Things like that. That might, in my opinion, might be a little strong. I, I, I do agree with that as well. But. Um, I feel like we need to help them and, and certainly, certainly contribute. But out of the whole, you know, for their first time, that might be just might be a little, little much. Okay. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. What would you feel more comfortable with? I guess. I, I would probably like three thousand, maybe. Yeah, we can. I'm probably making that adjustment. I'm not the only one speaking. I'm just no. I, I mean, I, no, that's I, good. I fully understand. Um, and then the, uh, the archaeological dig. I, obviously, I think that's a, a great thing. But I'm not sure how much the dig itself does for tourism. Right. Um, obviously, getting things set up in the museum after and all that is, is, I think, really important for bringing more people to to that museum. Yeah. Um, that's just my my thought on that. And I know Phil mentioned maybe last week that. There are some other possible grant opportunities for an archaeological dig outside of the... Potentially, um, we make it help with some arts money on, on the Oconee side. Um, Luther, you don't think the, the dig would qualify for the 250 American, the 250 uh, grant? I was hoping it would since we had Patriots there, but it doesn't have anything to do with the Revolutionary War. It would be pre there. It's pre-period. That's kind 
just to remind me, Phil, um, whenever we talked about the wild heart equine, uh, so the construction of the, that center, so that's to help with the creation of this venue for them that so will allow for all these events to... So they have, they have a covered venue now. Um, what they're asking for is to build out, it's in shell, and it's, it's just studded up. So they're, they're in need of finishing that space, which would be offices, restrooms, and um, a bunker, two bunk rooms. Like if they brought groups in, they could sleep in bunk rooms there. Um, so that's, that is to complete the construction of the operation side of the venue. Not the covered riding area. Okay. <clears throat> um, sorry. I know we mentioned three for them. I kind of like to see it bumped up a little bit more, just because I look at the potential. Like for example, with the music center, I think there's in the paperwork said there's going to be four events. I believe they're going to be hosting throughout the. Yeah, there was only four events on the, the West Virginia Music Center application. Okay, and then eventually. The idea is that when Equine is able to get this complete, they can, because it'll be indoor, inside, they can really host multiple kind well, of... Well, their, you know, their focus is on therapy. Yeah. Their focus is on, on equine therapy. They do concert series, yeah. but they only do a couple a year, and it's a fundraising effort for them okay. when they do it. Uh, their main tourism draw is when they have specialized um, therapists or world-renowned therapists come in and then they will have sessions they can hold 25 at a time but they'll fill up those 25 spots very quickly whenever they do that uh, all from all over the southeast but it's only it's 25 at a time so their big events are going to be just a concert you know that they do uh, and then their weekly routine of appointments they do about 100 a week and about 20 percent of those are tourists for us now they're Probably not spending the night, but they are on the hospitality side contributing because they're here much of the day. Yes. Yeah, we could definitely uh, possibly link that toward um, agri agri tourism. I would have to imagine. I kind of like to see Wild Heart at least maybe bumped up to thirty five hundred. Just a slight, slight tick up there. Um, we do have a little bit of room, obviously, uh, yeah. to, to play with. And then if we need to adjust anything down, we can certainly bump some other things up as well. Um, I like your recommendation, of, uh, Alex, with the, uh, the military the Oconee Military Museum. I mean, I think this with this phase two, this should pretty much help complete with the window replacement. This should get them done. Is that correct? Is this is so. help finish off. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I'm with that totally. Okay. Well, last last time we did uh, four thousand four, yeah. um, and sure. they're not eligible for that amount. So that's why. I mean, gotcha. again, it was just an arbitrary number, but uh, you know, and if it helps them complete it, then they were actually able to do a few more windows. Okay. Oh. With okay. the money that was given. Yeah. So, the military museum? Yes. Correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah they okay. have a lot of volunteers and we're actually able to do, I think, four or five more because of the volunteer work. And I'm pretty sure that'll finish them out with the windows, which will be outstanding if they can do that. Um, I was going to say, one of my thoughts is the, the farm center. I know we uh, bumped them down to 4,000 last time because they weren't prepared or uh, wasn't ready for um, the, the light install. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, pre previously we, we had done uh, 7,500 for them, uh, and then we bumped them down to that because of that. And, and if they're ready now, and it, uh, you know, it's, it's something that, we, we it, go up on that, yeah, on that it number. could could help them a little more. Maybe we go up a little on that one. Um, uh -huh. How about if you guys uh, are comfortable with that? How about five thousand? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I agree with that. They're starting to get some momentum. They are. Other yeah, events. I know they got a clay there. shooting coming, and they're actually planning some other stuff that they're going to kind of present in the next couple of months. I think that'd be. 
Very good. Um, my my always my thought is if there is extra money, you know, I'm all in favor of giving Walhalla Performing Arts Center more money. Um, they just are such a large driver to all the tourism in the county. Um, but that again, that's just my thought. It's just. They're huge. They're huge. They're, they're very, very, very big. Um, they're, they're <coughs> a great driver. Of so let's say the performing arts center, we take that up by another 500 there. Um, the impact of the Independence Day celebration for Seneca, let's take that up 500. Okay. I think it's a uh, 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 so the 13, 10 uh, yeah. May I make a uh, comment about the uh, visitor center? Yeah. Yeah. Um, just so you know, I'm not sure if what was in the package. I have not seen it. <coughs> it's kind of a misnomer in terms of an actual visitor center because we run uh, the visitor center mm -hmm. for the county. <coughs> Westminster is looking for a place to house somebody who represents the chamber as well as somebody who can hand out visitor guides. Uh, and they're inside the, I think they're inside the city, mm -hmm. city hall. Um, so, and I don't want to say anything to take take away the leverage of the amount of money that you propose for them, but um, I don't see that as being a, a um, how do I say this politely? The tourism driver? Yeah. <laughs> I can't get my arm around it. I'm on the chamber board, so it's kind of hard for me to, to say anything uh, negative about that. And it's not a negative statement, it's just a reality statement. It's, um, I don't see that as being a huge draw for handing out tourism information. I can say personally from our perspective, we're not giving them, uh, based on the number of visitor guides we give them, uh, you know, very few. And um, the potential move from City Hall, possibly the, the old magistrate in Westminster, is that in discussion as far as the number of people? No. I'm not sure about I've been that. Here stuff here and there like if you set the record straight like what what would be your goal as far as like potentially working with the chamber as far as combination chamber uh satellite site and business bureau like i guess extension westminster is that i think ultimately they it's more of a chamber office than it is a tourism office okay it's the chamber you know historically we had three chambers and then we combined them all into one in bounty land mm -hmm. uh, and now Westminster is asking that we have some sort of a chamber presence there and blend it in with the tourism. In the former chamber office at Westminster, we did have a tourism center that we, we stocked it with brochures and visitor guides. Um, but when that went away, we pretty much shut that down. Uh, at that time, we just weren't giving out that many guides there. I'm not sure how times have changed. That's been several years. Um, uh, the bottom line is I think you have some flexibility especially for something like the Wall Performing Arts Center. Uh, that's that's a true tourism draw. That's 100% tourism. Uh, whereas this is going to be an office that may not get that much traffic. And I don't think how long it's, it's, it's manned, like uh, 20 hours a week or something. Yeah, point like time. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. Those are just my comments. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I, guess I wasn't fully aware of, I guess, the maybe lack there of impact that it was having. Um, I just know it was something that we had funded largely in the past. Right? Yeah, um, because they, they, they didn't have it mm -hmm. initially. Okay. So it was like the sport was kind of the, the, the push of the initiation gotcha. to get it started. Yeah. Um, now, that, now that it is started, is it something that we need to pull back on or uh, should pull back on if we're not seeing the tourism impact from uh, that large amount of funding because um, that is you know, one sixth of all the funding that we're, we're able to give out and if we're not seeing a, a good return on that is that the best investment of the money so let's say um, hypothetically let's let's say we trim that down to 7500 mm -hmm. for example
the West Mu the Westminster Music Center events being attended. Uh, I'll be the first to tell you, I, I don't do they, that much, so I think I'm asking new. you. So uh, they, they started from last year, is that correct? I thought it was last year, right? Pre-COVID, they, they had a, you were on the board at one time. You want to speak to it? Yeah, I, I can could, I could speak to the pre-COVID period where they were very well attended. I you know I have 150, 200 people show up. I haven't been to one since uh, in post-COVID. So they haven't done anything post-COVID. This is their this is their attempt to restart. Just come back up. Post -COVID. Make a push. And uh, if you let me go back to there, uh, they're looking at four concerts uh, on Main Street uh, area. Um, you know, this is their chance to try to get re going. I I don't think is this on Main Street. It's on the street. The center itself is, is under construction. Has been for quite a while. I'm going to be finished with it this year. Okay. It's not going to be in the old ads and lads. It's in the uh, construction center. Uh, Daryl. Oh, okay. He gave them uh, some space there that they're uh, okay. remodeling. <clears throat> um, but the performing arts said, let's let's take them up to eight thousand. And then uh, with the music center, let's say six thousand. Which one? Music center. I'm sorry. Westminster. Westminster? Yeah. Let's say six. Okay. And then we can bump up a uh, farm center to six. Festival, well, Wahala is always well attended too. It's a big draw. Yeah, I'm, I would give. Well, you may want to consider giving them three nine seven yeah. two. Okay, it was like we're giving them pretty much all we can. Yeah, yeah. So pull that one out. Yep. Sure. Let's give that to uh, Discover Up Country. I'm sorry, what was the last one? Uh, I think the remainder. The Discover Up Country? 38, give it to up, Discover Up Country. That was 7738. work yeah I, I'm pretty good with that I'm still struggling with the, the 7500 for the Chamber of Commerce staffing um, if we're not seeing a, a visitor return out of that if we if we trim that now how much I mean maybe five thousand and or I mean, we can do 5500 and do performing arts center to 10 I, I'm I'm just looking at where the visitation numbers go. Yeah, uh, uh, right. The, uh, and and performing arts center just by and large above everything else on on this list even um, just pulls a ton, um, and I think 
with, with the work that they do for bringing tourism in, mm -hmm. um, it kind of does deserve our support. Sorry, uh, yeah, yeah, if we did 55 on the staffing. Is everyone okay with that? I like that. Thoughts? Foreman from? Art Center is huge. Yeah, this is strong. It, yeah. that, it's strong. And that's why I just... Continuous bases well, every week, if, week yeah, in, week they, out. Every week. Yeah. yeah. And, if, and if we can do, if we can justify supporting them as much as we can. Um, and, I agree. And get a good value oh, for our dollar spent. I agree. I, I think it's a good opportunity it's, to do that. It's great event, sir. I think, I think well, all 12 of them are obviously just very a point. important, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, but yeah. The, as a point of fact, they brought in over 50,000 people to Wahala last year, right? So, you know, these funds come from the states, you know, they, and to put it back into getting people here is, I would think, is the primary goal for right. this yeah. commission, right? I mean, well, yeah, it's the primary goal. Mm -hmm. So, it's all those are worthy, everything on there is worthy. You know, hopefully, next year we got more you yeah. know, to, to give out. <laughs> Yeah. I always want more, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I like this. Yeah. If uh, if you're ready, then mm -hmm. we do have to have a motion and a vote for each one of the 12. So, okay. Um, however you want to uh, divide it up and conquer. Um, but that, that allows us that, I know we have at least one recusal. That allows you to have a recusal if you're not, if you can't vote on something. Okay. All right, um, so we just start from the top of yes. this list. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, make a motion that we approve the $4,972 for the South Carolina Apple Festival for advertising. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. All right. Um, I, ma I make a motion that we approve the $8,000 recommendation for the advertising for Independence Day celebration for the city of Seneca. I'll second that. All those in favor? Okay. I have three, and then we have a recusal. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, next one. Um, I make a motion that we approve the $7,738 for advertising for Discover Upcountry, South Carolina. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Um, I make a motion that we approve the $1,000 for advertising for Eagle's Nest Art Center for advertising. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Next one. Um, I make a motion that we approve the $1,000 for advertising for the Gateway Arts Council. Second. Okay. All those in favor? All right. Um, next one. Uh, I make a motion that we approve the $2,500 for the uh, Museum of the Cherokee in South Carolina for the archaeological dig at Oconee Town site. Second. Okay. Yes, guys. All those in favor? Okay. Um, I make a motion that we approve the $5,500 for the uh, Coney County Chamber of Commerce for the Visitor Center staffing. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Um, I make a motion that we approve the uh, $3,790 for the uh, maintenance and window replacement for the Oconee Military Museum. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. All right. Um, I make a motion that we approve the $6,000 for the safety lighting for the farm center. Second. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, excellent. Um, I make a motion that we approve the $10,000 for the advertising for the Wahala Performing Arts Center. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? We're almost there. Uh, I make a motion that we approve the $6,000 for the uh, Westminster Music Center for the 2023 Music on Main. Second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. And last one, uh, make a motion that we approve the $3,500 for the Wild Hearts Equine Therapeutic Center for the Construction and Training Center. I'll second. Okay. And all those in favor? All right. Very good. Boom. So these will go to council on April the 21st, March the 21st, sorry. 
Okay. So I'll get them printed in uh, tomorrow, okay. and they'll be on the March 21st account for the um, so that's, that's our maybe our third cycle in a row we've been able to do 60,000. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's 120,000 over the last two cycles. That's for, for what we're bringing in, that's pretty impressive. That's strong. And it's turning back yeah. to the community. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I'm really glad we're able to, able to do that. That's 10,000 a month. That's nice. That's nice. That's good. And I just make a comment for one of the ones who writes this check, this check you know, for people who come and, and stay on our, in our properties. Yeah. And, you know, talking with the owners of these properties to let them know firsthand now, at least for me, as I can tell them, well, I know exactly where your money's going. Right. And, right. and here's, here's where it's going. It's an easier conversation to have, at least from sitting in this chair of, well, you know, where, where, where's all these, this, this money coming mm -hmm. from? Well, and what, what is it used for? And, it's a better conversation now to be able to, to say that, awesome. I think. I do have two items today from the internal. Uh, I, didn't think I, was only, I thought I was only have one, but I got two. Uh, the first one is um, we've already booked the event. Uh, this is one that we had to, we had to book in advance. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mr. Crappy, um, or if you're north of the Mason Dixon, Mr. Crappy, <laughs> uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Crappy uh, classic invitational qualifier. Uh, as many of you know, Seneca Creek is finishing up. And we are starting to sell it um, a little bit. I'll show you a picture and a video of that here in just a minute. Um, but this is a its a total of 25000 posting fee for this tournament. Uh, we are going after a state uh, uh, sports tourism grant, which is a 50% grant. And then we'll have a little bit of overhead on top of that. So this request is for $14,000 uh, to cover the hosting and the thing we need for that tournament. There will be 120 anglers. Here, uh, those two days is two tournament days, four practice days, uh, plus we don't track it, but the pre-fishing, you know, before the event, <coughs> there's a number of days they come and, and try to get used to the location. Um, and this is a series, so these guys are trying to, to qualify for the Mr. Crappy end of the year uh, tournament. So this is a $75,000 winner event. So the winning boater uh, will get a check for $75,000. So this is a big event on their circuit. Um, and we were able to get it on Hartwell at Seneca Creek. So that's a request to match the state grant uh, that is being turned in this week uh, for this tournament. Can we go ahead and take up that vote? need a motion? I do need a motion okay. for both of these. Right. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve the $14,000 for the Mr. Crappy Classic Invitational Qualifier. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Awesome. Thank you. Yep. And, uh, this, and that, act, that event came from Teams, which is an event that Charlotte and I participated in this year. Um, and we met Mr. Crappy. Uh, I, yeah, I was, I was out with my surgery during his site visit, so Ken, <laughs> Ken and Charlotte showed Wally around. But uh, uh, we hope that that is a, um, a good partnership moving forward, and we, this is not the first not the last time they come. Right. The second one is an equipment purchase. Um, we have we are in dire need of, a, of one more mower. Uh, it's a state contract purchase, and after talking with uh, the county uh, on our capital <coughs> vehicle replacement plan, they asked if this could come out of ATAX. Um, so this is a request to replace a a mower at South Cove. Uh, we have two mowers there. Um, one of them we have three. One of them is a blower, it, the, the head's been taken off and turned into a blower. So this is to replace one of those. You know, we're getting ready to start. We started cutting last week, and these will be used just nonstop uh, through the season. So uh, this is a request. It's a $14,000 minus a state contract. So this will be our cost uh, to do this internally through uh, through ATAC, so 11326 Um. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve $11,326 for the Hustler 60 X1 more. I'll second it. All those in favor? And even though it's a state contract, that is a local purchase. Uh, it's done here in Westminster through Dixon okay. Tractor. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. Um, so I'll share with you, here's a picture of where we are. Uh, some of you have gotten to, to see the site, and then I'll see if I can get this to pull up here for us.
So here's one of our drone shots of the progress at Seneca Creek. Uh, this was done in January, I think January 19th. Uh, we do now have all four docks in place. So you see the one there at the ramp. There's another one where the barge is sitting. There's also a floating fishing pier to the left of that on the Clemson side. And then there's a kayak launch uh, back in that cove. Um, the dirt area, let's stop it just a second. The dirt area that you see here uh, is a picnic uh, area. So we'll have five picnic pads on a trail that goes right. You can kind of see the, the grading of the trail. It kind of sweeps back around and it connects to the kayak launch. And then the restroom sits right here on top of this little hill. So uh, the restroom is a prefab concrete restroom. Um, aesthetically, it matches the South Cove office. So it's the, the rock um, on the bottom and the uh, board and batten on top with the same color scheme that we've used through the park system during all of our upgrades. And um, it's a, uh, I think it's a four stall unit on each side and then we added a storage room in the back. So our staff that goes through the Lake Hartwell landings <coughs> will have a place to store their cleaning supplies, you know, paper supplies, and not have to drive all the way back to High Falls, which is their home base, uh, whenever they redo. So this will give them something on the lake to make their circle a little bit, a little bit uh, less traveled. Um, so this is kind of where it's at today. Um, we have done the hydro seating on the roadside. The next stage, uh, we've got sewer uh, that has already been run. We've got water. We've got fiber. Uh, we're just waiting on the electrical piece. And uh, the restroom should be delivered in the next two weeks. Uh, it is complete in the factory. Uh, rain has been a challenge trying to get all that done. We've got to have enough dry days to prep the pad for it to sit on and have the plumber be able to run the, to stub it out. So that's kind of where we are. Um, Literally, you know, if we could get a week's worth of dry weather, uh, we could get that in, in place and, and be ready to go. Uh, we do have a fishing permit there March 18th. Uh, the restroom will not be there. We'll, we'll do Porter John's for that, unfortunately. But uh, the two May events, we, we expect to be 100% done. Um, outside of the, um, the roadside there, everything else is going to be sodded. And so that'll be part of the, that'll be the final piece that goes in. And then... Um, the security lighting, once the electricity goes in, we've got security lights and cameras uh, that will be on this site that will be housed through Clemson's Police Department, which is across the street. So, is there a fee booth? So there, there will not be a fee booth at this location. And um, I am proposing that we move away from collecting fees at the unmanned locations. That, that is a request that I've made, man, don't know that yet. <laughs> um, that's an request that I made of, count of, of our administrator during the budget process. We spend more time on the Iron Ranger boxes trying to outbox a thief, just to be honest. Uh, people are stealing the money. We don't have the staff to empty them every day. And so you have the Iron Rangers that are there collected, and then you've got the safety of the Ranger who takes a locked box out and, and takes it back to you know, a place where multiple people count. So. Um, we did not collect it all last year uh, because of that, and we have proposed in the budget for them to consider not collecting at the unmanned location. Now, we'll still collect fees at the parks, places that are manned. Uh, but an unmanned location, we, we've proposed not to collect fees, and uh, that'll be a conversation we'll have um, with council during the budget process. So, uh, we, I'll have to go back and look. Uh, it was between fifteen dollars and $20,000 in revenue that we brought in from those but we're expending a, a lot of money fixing the boxes and, you know, with time and labor trying to, to keep folks from stealing the money that's in there. So that's a balance, and that's a question that I'm posing of them to Good. consider. So. Um, this site, will this be open entry, or at some point will it be gated at night? It will not be gated. Um, yeah. It will be 24 hours for fishing. Yeah. Um, we do anticipate the lighting and the cameras to be a major asset for this location. Um, <coughs> the university has taken control of the building next door, which I think is where you work, uh, yes, Sean. Yes. Um, so <laughs> as it gets on around here, this building here, which yep. used to be the testing building, mm -hmm. uh, is now university property. And they are also looking at building all this across the road here 
uh, expanding their facilities from campus and getting them out of core campus mm -hmm. and getting them over here so that they've got more room on core campus for either residential living or classes. Gotcha. So we are unsure, as I sit here today, as to how much of this Seneca Creek Meadows parking lot they're going to use, and that's what we're on hold with on our on selling this venue for tournaments. I'm waiting on that final design from them so that we know for sure how many boats we can hold and what we can go after from a tournament standpoint. So once we have that final, and they're in their final phases with DOT and the rerouting of this road and all that stuff, so we knew all that was coming, and so now we're, we're fitting in what we can, and we're waiting on that final design to, to, to really start selling the venue, um, you know, year out, two years out, like what we expect will happen. So, so how many fishing so cars? On a, for day use, uh, they'll hold 49 boats. Uh, and 20 regular cars because you've got the floating fishing pier, you've got picnic space, uh, and then you'll see these down here on the bottom. Uh, a lot of people like fishing at the bridge, so we anticipate a user-created path that will go over towards the bridge and people fishing, you know, with lights and whatnot at night. So <coughs> some bank fishing as well. So we've got 49 uh, boat and trailer and then 20 regular car. For tournaments, uh, depending on how much we have over here, we expect to be able to hold up to 200, 250 boats for tournaments. Nice. Which is a, a major asset to be able to access Lake Hartwell for, for that, for tourism impact. So, all of the angled spots in the middle are uh, for trailers, correct? Yes. So, this is a one way road. When you come off of Center Creek Road, you'll come in, you'll take a right, uh, you'll go down, you'll launch your boat, and you'll pull into the parking lot. If you park on the right, though, we hadn't figured out the signage yet, but you'll pull all the way through. Okay. So, you'll pull all the way through to this other side, and then when you exit, you'll just pull straight forward and go back down and get your boat. So everything will be one way, um, and then we've got uh, safety lights that went on the on the end of the docks this morning, and then again when the cameras and everything get up. And I, I hope to look at security cameras at other unmanned locations, but without the use of fiber, it would be just a recording, you know, 30-day recording that you would just go back and check. So we are looking at that as a as a possibility down the road. Vandalism at unmanned recreation sites is a challenge for everybody. We're not unique to that. Um, but you know, trying to cut down best we can is, is our goal. So where the restrooms are going to be everything, is, are there going to be any kind of uh, vending machines or anything like that? Because no. no. It'll be a bring in, you know, if you want to bring in one or not. Okay. Any other questions on that? <coughs> All right, we are really at an hour, so I'm always trying to... Did you mention the last time you wanted to... We kind of talked about it last time, but just kind of give us a, a real quick update on the projects. I thought you may mention that last week. Do you have a question on a specific project? Well, I, I just, it seemed like I remember you were telling us that um, today you was going to try to just give us a quick update on I was going to try to do a quick update today. We kind of ran out of time a little yeah. bit, um, and I did not print anything out for you. Okay. Um, if you have specific questions, uh, you know, we've got something going on in each park plus Seneca Creek. Mm -hmm. um, I'm certainly happy to answer. I, I, don't, I don't have anything ready for you today on a project standpoint. I know there was a project on Hartwell where we took ownership of a landing over from mm -hmm. the state, I believe? From the Corps. Corps, yeah. Uh, and, we, uh, we leased and it from the Corps. I'm sorry? We leased it from the Corps of Engineers. Sure. And it, it was in pretty rough shape, uh, <coughs> if I remember correctly. Short, the shoreline? Was the shoreline issue? Yeah, were, were we able to do that? I know um, so we took over. Levels, right? um, we took over a lease for Friendship this past two year, year and a half ago now, okay. um, and it's it's doing well. Uh, it was in pretty good shape. They actually, we we talked the core into coming in and replacing the roof on the building before we took it over because okay. it was in pretty bad shape. Um, so we we that's in good shape. It's working well. Uh, we also did a improvement. Uh, the, the asphalt went down yesterday on Nolan's Ford, so out off of Dr. John's Road. We extended the prep ramp there for launching, uh, and then we also finished the asphalt at High Falls yesterday for the new building down on the water. So those are two things that happened this week, okay. uh, and then I just added we're going to do a, a um, courtesy dock at South Union, which we also just did some shoreline work. That's the one you're thinking of. Okay, yeah, I knew it was shoreline work. Yeah, yeah. So we did shoreline work at South Union, um, <coughs> and we're going to add a courtesy dock there. We had a lot of folks who like to fish that arm. Because I think I think uh, lake levels or weather conditions had 
prevented that work being done for a little while. I just I hadn't heard of it. Yeah, it was completed. Yeah, that that is done, and then uh, we started the project scope for the boat ramp or for the courtesy dock this week. Okay. And then how far you said um, asphalt down is that for the point shelter? No, the the asphalt of High Falls was for the patio deck. So when we built the new patio deck, we we it was gravel down through there. Mm -hmm. So now everything is paved and striped for the patio deck. <coughs> uh, the point shelter, which is the shelter on on the very point at, at High Falls, is concrete is being poured starting Monday, and uh, I'll have by May I'll have a picture of it for you. It'll be complete hopefully by May. So I'll have a better job in May of, of kind of some pictures <laughs> and things because we won't have grants. Yeah. And so I'll do a project update, and then May is our whole budget. So you'll see. You'll see our, our supplemental budget, you'll see our visitor county budget, and we'll have to vote on all that in May for it to go to council. Okay. Um, and then the last thing, uh, this this will probably tie in uh, Ken on this one. Um, the council had their strategic planning meeting, I think it was last mm -hmm. Friday, I believe, and I think I heard Councilman Davis made mention about, you know, obviously because uh, um, County Minister uh, Amanda Brock had mentioned about uh, especially from Crenshaw about the need for additional police uh, raises for the police and so forth that's going to be needed for more funding coming up for them at some point. And uh, Councilman Davis had brought up the concept of the hospitality tax for the first time. <laughs> uh, what did you say? He brought up hospitality tax at that meeting. And so that's the first I've heard that come out of their mouth <laughs> in a while. And so um, I know it was quite different from the last time, Ken, when you did a presentation for a planning commission over a year or so ago, um, if it ever got to that point that this would have to be something to be considered because now this talk about budget and the need for extra additional funding coming in, it might be necessity. Well, uh, the hospitality tax has always been there as an option for them to consider. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think the timing has to be right mm -hmm. and the project, the project scope of the things that are going to be used for has to be laid out. Um, but it, it's... It's typically mentioned every year during the discussion that it's an option. Um, so at, at one point it gets considered is certainly up to council. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, that they would be a county-wide hospitality tax? Is that what the proposal, I guess? Is yeah, like unincorporated there's, areas, right? Well, there's not a proposal yet. They're just right, they're right, arranged on the revenue the, streams yeah. um, that are out there. But you know, the, each of the cities have a hospitality tax right now. Mm -hmm. It's just not collected in the unincorporated areas of the county. Right. I think we talked about last time the missed impact was about a mil to a mil five, maybe up to two mil, possibly, um, per year. We haven't done a Department of Revenue takeoff since pre-COVID. Yeah. Uh, and that number was about 900,000. Okay. So if, if council directs that as a possibility, then, then we would dig deeper and kind of get them some updated numbers. But I haven't got that request yet. Okay. But yeah, it typically comes up as a, as a revenue option. Every year, yeah, um, and you know, I, I do see down the road it may be something that, that they consider. So, especially as we projects get bigger and cost more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. On that topic, you know, there's five municipalities in the county, mm -hmm. including Salem and West Union. <clears throat> uh, those, um, what is that number? You, the amount the municipality has to collect before they have to start. Uh, expending money like Seneca does. Is it, is uh, it like 50? 50,000? I believe so. I thought it was like 250,000. Um, so. There was a level you get to when you're collecting these hospitality taxes in the city level. And Seneca is the only one right now that uh, exceeds that mark. And so as a result of that, they take a certain percentage of that and distribute it around just like you're distributing funds today. And, yeah. And so we are a recipient of that those funds. Okay. Uh, Wahala, I think, is, is rapidly approaching that mark. So I think they hit, I, I thought they hit close to $200,000 in hospitality taxes last year. So once again, it, when it reaches that threshold, anything above that is dispersed? Or is Do you know that number? That threshold I, number? No, I don't know the number, but there's, there's, not a, there's not near as much oversight on hospitality taxes right. as on with, <laughs> there is a baseline that once you collect over a certain amount, mm -hmm. you have to have a committee 
that helps you disperse that money. Okay. Uh, it's not over. It's the, the, the whole pot of money. Yeah. Um, and you also have to uh, establish, now this is on the accommodation side, you have to establish a point where 30%, it's called a 30% fund, uh, where that money goes, and it has to go to an organization that promotes tourism. For the city of Seneca and for Oconee County, Visit Oconee is that organization that that 30% money goes to on the state funds that come back to their organizations. Okay. And I don't know what that number, that threshold is that makes you, I have to research <coughs> that. And that. That's accommodations. That's accommodations. That's accommodations. Nice. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, our okay. next meeting is May the 4th. Yep. May the 4th be with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, our grant, uh, next August cycle grant to run is August the 15th. So I have nothing else for you, Mr. Chair. All right. And um, with that, I make a motion that we adjourn. I'll second. All right. All those in favor. Yeah. Thanks for the party pass. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.